Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put some glitter on the baits to really make them sparkle more. There's several ways you can do this. Um, I do a lot of epoxy baits, um, you know, such as this. this is a Lucky Craft that I repainted and stuff. Um, I spray glitter on them with a one phase or a single phase airbrush and it goes on a little bit easier because I'm spraying it with epoxy. Uh, you don't ever want, or in my opinion, you don't ever want to spray or try to spray a, po or a, a glitter through your double phase because I think it's going to really clog that needle and stuff and you're, you're really going to ask for problems you don't really need. So basically what I do is uh, I'll take some of this uh, Lure Works Clear Coat 2 Clear, it's uh, 5800, and then I'll put a little bit of the retarder in there and uh, I'll put some glitter in there. I've got some 008 Crystallina, that's what we're going to put on it. I like to use these little um, stirring sticks. I've already put some in the glass and I've already put my glitter in there, I put like three or four. And then what I do is I'll take it and uh, I'll use a oil brush, you know, you keep it good and wet so it flows on easy. You just go in there and get your glitter and then you just take your bait and uh, you just kind of paint it and just kind of move it around. You don't want to put it on too heavy because then it, you know, it could run and put little bumps and stuff. But the reason I'm putting on the glitter now is because when I paint the rest of my colors, I don't want glitter on top of those. I want those colors to be solid. Like the chartreuse back here doesn't matter, but like when I do the back and the throat and the gill plate and the eyes and stuff, I want to have all my glitter and everything else on, and then when I, I do that and put my final coat, I've got solid coats that go into the glitter and so forth. So, I mean, it's, it's a real easy application. Uh, you just take the bait, you just kind of paint it on. I don't know if you can see that going on. Go down over the tail and stuff. There was an old bait that used to be made in Texas. It was one of the hottest baits on Lake Mead, kind of a, a, uh, a boogie tail. And basically, what it is, it was you know two tone worms or solid colored worms, but then the tail was all glitter. It was a silver glitter, and those really caught a lot of fish. Uh, if I wasn't catching them on it, what was happening is uh, I was actually it would find the fish for me. And then I could switch to a more subtle bait, like a, a gets it or something like that, two bait. And uh, I don't know if you've tried them, but I think one of the best two baits on the market right now is made by Canyon Plastics. And it's the Logan Special Color. I've caught so many fish on that bait. It's, it's just amazing how many fish I've caught on that bait. I'm gonna go ahead and put some on these, uh, these uh, chartreuse ones I painted. That way the glitter's on, so when I put the back on, it's solid. You know, all over the tail and stuff. And I don't know if that's showing up now, but hopefully after I get uh, the clear coat, that will definitely make it uh, pop some more. And I mean, you don't have to put a lot on. Uh, it's in your brush, and, and you just throw it on, and uh, it comes up. Real good. Darker colors is going to show better, like if you did it in a black. Yeah, you can kind of see it sparkling around. So, just while I've been talking here, I basically got these baits done now. So, we can move on to the next stick. Just like any other baits, uh, one of my favorite cleaners for it, just a dollar store Windex or off, off brand. And you just wash it, wipe it off, and if it dries, you know, you can still just break the brush apart to use again. So, we're good with that. Alright, now we're going to start putting some finishing touches on the baits. We'll put, we'll spray some, come back to these chartreuse ones and show you how to put a scale pattern on it. But 
The first one we're going to do, and, and we'll do that really quick, on a, on a bluegill, one of the colors I like to use for the throat is orange. I'll use red for the gill, but orange for the, um, the throats. And I'm not going to use hardly any paint. I mean, I, I actually put way too much in there. It's a nice orange by uh, Lure Works. It's a blaze orange, 5805. Uh, I also use like a fluorescent yarn or a fluorescent yarn orange if I'm doing like a fire tiger, fluorescent chartreuse, fluorescent green, fluorescent orange, and then I'll also use a uh, a black to put the lines. So now we're going to put these floats on here, and basically it's it's nothing really more than that. I mean, if you don't have any white under there to really make it, I, I actually shaded all these. So all I really want to do is just to get a little bit more color. So I'm getting my orange on the throats now. And I really don't have a lot of baits here, but doing the video, it takes a lot longer to do. In the time that I've shot this video, if I was actually painting these baits to make them to sell or uh, going fishing with friends or you know I just needed a bunch that I was going and I knew this was a bait that really worked well must probably do 50 or 60 of these really easy by the time I've done these because I mean I'm just flying through them we're going to do the same thing on the chartreuses we'll give them a little bit of a arms and nose let's go a little bit lighter this and shade it don't really want it dark, just kind of want it kind of subtle on there. we got the glow on there and the chartreuse. We're going to put that green back on it in a little bit. We might even go with an emerald green that they've, uh, they've already got mixed up. That's one of their stock colors. It's a pretty nice color. But, you know, it's just like I'm doing this orange now. I might have put a little bit too much in the cup. I didn't really put that much in at all. But let's say if I put too much in that cup, I could grab some more baits. I've already got them on the stands. And, uh, you know, I could go ahead and use the rest of the orange out on those, but I knew I was going to paint them. And uh, then I wouldn't have to worry about the paint. I use it all. I really don't waste any at all. So, okay, we got orange, I think, on all of them. Let me look. It looks pretty good. Let me clean my brush and then I will show you the next color. Okay, now we're going to put a brown back and we might even go back over the bait a little bit more with a brown just to uh, change up some of the, uh, the textures on it. When we start painting the colors in a straight line and stuff, or we're starting to add more paint in certain areas. We want to make sure these baits are, you know, pretty well dry because we don't want to, you know, push stuff out of the way. We don't want it to uh, smear it. So we'll start on this first one. If you remember this bait when we started, this is that uh, Swim Doctor by Canyon Plastics. Uh, it was basically uh, like a greenish prism with a, a black stripe on the back. But now what we're going to do is we're going to add a brown stripe. This is where knowing how your brush works so you can get the lines. And you want to find out where it's working, where it's spraying good, so you can get it. Remember, you want to go and keep it consistent when you spray it. Because if you, you spray it and you move it different, now you're going to start getting blotches on it. So we're going to go up here. Get our paint started and we're just going to bring it right down the back. Got a little brown back. But just uh, shade it up a little bit and see what happens. So now we're going to do these. These we're not going to bring all the way back. Remember we got the chartreuse tail here. So we're going to keep that uniform. So we're going to go right down the middle. 
You want to have a steady hand on this. You don't have to put this on the door. All you're going to do is just change it up a little bit. Add more colors. But I admit that purple really pops, the blue's starting to pop more. Now, if you're worried about what it costs to buy an airbrush, you can go on eBay, uh, your local Craigslist. Sometimes people will be selling them. A lot of times people will buy these, they'll take it out, try it once, and give up on it. So you can get a pretty good deal on it. Or you can buy new. There's, there's a lot of off brands that work good. You know, the off brands, you, you more or less have to buy them and try them yourself. Because people are airbrushing, I haven't tried them, but you know, do a little research on them, what they offer, and uh, they have the replacement parts, they have the different size needles, which is important. I mean, when you take one airbrush and change your size needles for your different sprays, it's, it's going to work a lot better for you. Um, Let's see, do we have any more of those? Okay, let me uh, clean my brush out again and then we'll get into the, the next two steps.